We are back with another My Team episode. If you haven't been following along, go ahead and check out the playlist in the top right corner. But yeah, we are back. It has been, a, I think, maybe two weeks almost without a My Team video. So we are back this time in Brazil. It is a sprint race as well. So you're going to get double the races today uh, for this episode. And um, yeah, we haven't really done too much with our car. We, we decided not to upgrade for this reason. We knew the regulations were coming. We thought they were actually going to come last week in Mexico, but they came this week in Brazil. And the only regulation change is the change to the chassis. No changes to the aero, powertrain, or durability. And, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, we had like 2,200 saved up. I think we will be able to adapt pretty much every part in the chassis. We saved enough uh, resources for that. If they would have done powertrain and chassis, then we might have been screwed over a little bit. But yeah, just the chassis, I think we'll be all right. We'll be able to adapt every part. And then hopefully next season, we can come in as a regular points finisher, maybe. Maybe a, a, a good mid midfield side that can fight for points every race. Let's put it that way. We'll also get a new teammate as well. Because Jack Dewan has been stinking up the gaff this season. He hasn't really done too much as we have a bit of a moment on our qualifying lap. And um, Brazil's one of those... I love racing around Brazil. I can race around Brazil all day but i always struggle just a little bit you know i feel like i over pushed the car around this track because i feel good around here i always want to go quicker because i'm not the quickest around brazil i like it i like racing around it but i'm not the quickest and i feel like i can push that little extra bit but when i do the car just goes out on me as we run wide once again and it's it's turning into a bit of a a calamity of a session right now you can see look how close that is the tiniest margin but i guess if you are over that white line then um it is track limits as i mean many f1 drivers have found out in real life around numerous circuits not really brazil but in other circuits such as austria and qatar you know they, they're getting track limits left right and center and that's just the rules nowadays isn't it? you go over the white lines you're getting track limits so we've got to make sure we're staying in the white lines and this is our final attempt with p22 with miles off of it because obviously we haven't put in a representative lap time just yet a little wide of the apex there so it's all down it's all down to this final lap as uh didn't really turn in as well as we liked it it's a bit of a scruffy lap so far i mean we just want to keep it on the track and make sure we get a lap on the board as we turn in a little bit too early there there's a there's a bit of a, a low curb and a high curb and we hit that high curb on the apex as we have a big moment. That was almost us around once again. But we hold it on through. Miss the apex out of the final corner. And I'll tell you what, it's not a good lap. We will be very, very lucky if we find ourselves into Q2. Can we at least move up the order as up to the line is going to be a 109.2. And I think we do move up, but I don't think it's enough for Q2. It is not. It's P18. I'll tell you what, we did move up quite a few positions but we miss out by about a tenth tenth and a half for a potential q2 and it was there it was certainly there we made quite a few mistakes on that lap and i think if we would have put in a banker lap at the start we would have been all right we would have been able to push a little bit more and we probably would have made it into q2 but no worries we do have a sprint race to rectify that as it's five red lights and away we go in the sprint race can we make up some positions in the sprint race for the main races. We're going to go down the inside of Nico Hulkenberg. Right behind Alex Albon. There's a bit of contact with the Haas. But we find our way through just about. And I'll tell you what, sweeping around the outside. We definitely went off the track a little bit there. But no track limits warnings. And we find ourselves having a P15. So we move up three positions from where we start. We're behind the Aston Martin of Large Stroll. But we've made up three positions ahead of some of the slower cars. And we're going to try and find a couple of positions. And down the inside, we go a large stroll. When they go like a train like that, you can make up positions pretty easily. As you saw our teammate down in P21. I mean, come on, Jack. You can do a little better than that. Like, we're fighting up here for, for P14. And you're down in P21 just chilling. You can be faster. This is why we need a new teammate. A more experienced teammate. A teammate with a bit more pace. Just so... You know, he can make his way up the grid and actually be able to fight with us and uh, score a few points to help us out in the constructors. But as you can see, lap four, not really much going on. We're on to lap six now. We're kind of stuck in a DRS train. Around Brazil, it's, it's not easy. You've got that long straight, but if everybody's got DRS, it is so, so hard 
to overtake. And that's kind of what's happened here. We've got ahead of Lance Stroll, but we're staying in the DRS of the cars up ahead. And there's a massive trade of cars for the Red Bull. I'm not sure what Red Bull that is, but there's a Red Bull up ahead. And uh, yeah, everybody's just kind of staying in the train, getting DRS off each other, and just about holding on to their positions. And we are in a sprint race. Only the top eight score points, but we know that's not really realistic. So we're just trying to finish as high as possible to start higher up in the main race and then we can maybe score points in the main race because you get points down to p10 and we do have one more chance one more chance to have a go at valtteri bottas and potentially start p13 for the race could even be p12 i mean albon's not too far away and he's dropped out of drs of the alpines up ahead so potentially albon could be on the cards as well as we're right behind valtteri bottas no we don't look at a move down the inside we sit right behind him so bottas stays in p13 we have a bit of a slide through the center s's and that's pretty much the battle done with the alfa romeo we just got to defend from large stroll behind and it's gonna be p14 in the sprint race a very uneventful sprint race nothing too much happened leclerc takes the victory hamilton and Sainz getting on the sprint podium with a stap and p4 so that keeps the championship interested i think that extends leclerc's advantage just a little bit little bit verstappen fading away hamilton still in the mix as well we're starting p14 in the race jack doing p21 let's get into sunday's grand prix Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with a stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012 and just four years later Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. Before we begin let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, Leclerc, Albon, Bottas, The Rookie, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, De Vries, Joe, Magnussen, Dewan, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. We learned from the sprint race that we can dive bomb down into turn one and gain a few positions. We gained three positions at turn one in the sprint race. So we're going to start on the soft tyres and try and do something similar because... From P14, we make up three positions. We're on the cusp of points, and then we can kind of defend for our lives and uh, try and bring home a point or two for Bamford MB Motorsport because our teammate down in P21 is certainly not doing that. You see three cars are starting on the hard tyres, and Charles Leclerc has also taken a penalty, so he is down in P11 as we get ready to get racing here in Brazil for Sunday's Grand Prix. It's five red lights. And away we go for the race. It's not a bad start. It's a good start from Bottas. A poor one from Albon. We're going to look down the inside. Can we dive bomb a few cars? We see Leclerc up ahead. We're not going to dive bomb down the inside of him. We're going to try and follow him through. Around the outside, maybe, of the LP. No, Leclerc can't get through quick enough. But we do make up one, two positions on Albon and Bottas as we defend against Alex Albon. And now we've got to potentially find another position or two. I feel like these cars up ahead are going to be a little bit too fast for us. You've got the Alpine of Gazi right up in front. Can we look for a move? No, we're going to be careful for now, but we could make a little dive bomb into this right-hander as a rule in the train. Yes, we do. Gazi on the hard tyres. That's an important move to get done. And now, up in the P11. It's a good spot to be. All we need is someone in the top 10, really, to retire and defend for our lives against everybody behind. But seeing Albon directly behind us as well and Gazi and Bottas we can beat those cars as long as we drive pretty well and I tell you what we're driving very very well because we're right on the back of Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin he's lost DRS to Charles Leclerc up ahead could we be overtaken at Aston Martin on raw pace let's have a look at this around the outside of Fernando Alonso into the points paying positions see you later what a move that is I mean it was a pretty simple move but around the outside I mean, what a move that is because 
it's an unlikely move. We don't expect to be racing the, the Aston Martin. I think it's more of the importance of the move to put us into a points position. And uh, it's not long before we back in the DRS of the cars up ahead because they're all just following in the train. I mean, I hope they change that at some point next year where cars actually battle each other. But we are going to see Leclerc battle with Max Verstappen. He's going to go around the outside. Verstappen looks very, very slow for some reason. Leclerc, this is a big, big battle when you look at the championship. And Charles Leclerc gets it done around the outside. That's a great move from Leclerc. That's better than ours. And it's more important than ours as well because that is for the championship. And that's going to help Leclerc pull further away from Verstappen in the championship. And next up for us is Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen is very, very slow right now. And we're going to try and take advantage of this. Down the straight. Are we going to overtake a Red Bull? Are we feeling okay? Look at this. Around the outside of Max Verstappen. He leaves us the room side by side with a two-time world champion. And through we go into P9. We're on the same difficulty as we were in the sprint race. In the sprint race, we couldn't even get close enough to Bottas to make a move. But we're making moves on Fernando Alonso. We're making moves on Max Verstappen. What is going on here in Brazil? I mean, it's it's not really lasted that long because Verstappen is going to get us back right here as we have a bit of a moment on the exit. But we can say that we overtook a two-time world champion. I mean, we can say that we overtook two two-time world champion um, because Fernando Alonso is also a two-time world champion. I know you might be thinking, well, Verstappen's a three-time world champion. Not in this career mode, he's not. He's only a two-time world champion unless he wins it this year. But that Red Bull is looking slow and I think he might have a problem with his car because Perez is pulling away and I mean, maybe the Red Bull is just slow. You got They're in P8 and P9 right now. Have the other cars developed a lot faster? I think the Mercedes is currently the fastest car and quite frankly i'm happy if red bull are falling back because that's more teams that we can fight for for a potential points and, and we're in a big chance here in brazil as we come into the pits we're going to put on the medium set of tires we're struggling a bit on the softs but we we chuck on the mediums we're, we're one of the first ones in this could work out very very well and i tell you what look how close that is to verstappen we almost jumped verstappen out of the pits we still could we ghosted through him side by side on the pit exit have you seen that before what a i mean what i mean we'll take it what a move that is we overtake verstappen on the pit exit but that is absolutely crazy i have never seen that before let's have a look at that again from a different angle because i don't actually know what just happened we put on the medium tires we come out of the pits. We're pretty much neck and neck with Verstappen. And Verstappen... I, I, I think it was a bit of a glitch from the AI. But either way, we've overtaken Verstappen on the pit exit. We will take that any day of the week. And it's not going to be very long-lived. Because Verstappen dives down the inside. He takes that place back a lap later. And... Um, yeah, I think he's got better pace than us on the mediums because he was right on our tail through that whole outlap. And he's actually pulled away a little bit as well. And we're going to get overtaken this time by Fernando Alonso. So now our, our car pace is, is really showing. We were a lot better on the softs, but we chuck on the mediums and now we're a lot slower. I don't really understand it, but I guess our car doesn't work as well on the mediums as it did on the softs. And it's pretty painful. I mean, we overtook the Stafford and we were... We were thinking of a potential podium. Well, I wasn't really, but we were thinking of points for sure. And now we find ourselves P12. I mean, Verstappen's still up the road. Three places away from Max Verstappen. It is possible to still finish in P12. There are three more laps to go at the end of this lap. P10 is just up the road as well. We could certainly still score points here in Brazil. There's no threat from behind. We've got a nice, comfortable gap to Alex Albon and Lance Stroll. So all eyes ahead here in Brazil. But the big problem is we have no DRS down the straight. You can see in the bottom right, we've got a faulty DRS. What is going on? This is the worst time to have a faulty DRS. We've saved up our ERS. We could go on the attack if we had DRS, but we do not. We want to be in that P11 position with DRS. We've got one lap to go as we cross the finish line here. With no DRS, this is almost an impossible task. How are we going to make the move with no DRS? We're going to have to do it in an unorthodox spot. 
if we want to, to score a single point here in Brazil. We might even have to have Gazi and Ocon fight. We are going to have to have Gazi and Ocon fight. There's no way we're going to get it on real pace. I tell you what, Pierre Gazi hears me. He goes down the inside of Esteban Ocon. The two Alpines run side by side. Can we pick off Esteban Ocon and then potentially get Gazi on the run down to the finish line? We're going to go around the outside of Ocon. Go on. Oh, no, we've made a big error. It's, it was worth it. It was a good effort, but we just ran it a bit too wide. We couldn't quite turn it in. We pretty much came into that corner with too much pace, and that is all she wrote at the end of the Grand Prix. We needed to make that move stick if we were going to score points, so we might as well have risked it. I mean, we were, it was either pretty much going to be P12 or nothing there, or P10 or nothing there for us, and um, it ends up being nothing. So, if we have DRS, I think we score points here. I think we get a P10, maybe even a P9 if Verstappen was still in reach. But Lewis Hamilton takes the victory here in Brazil. And I tell you what, that makes the championship very, very interesting. He is nine points behind Charles Leclerc. George Russell is 17 points behind. Verstappen, 24. And Norris, 27. So, five drivers still within the shout of the championship. We have two more races to go. One in Las Vegas, one in Abu Dhabi. And it is very, very likely going to go down to the final race in Abu Dhabi. It looks like Mercedes are kind of locked up that constructors with Ferrari and Red Bull battling for p2 but back to our race p12 it, it's it's a great race from up from us but it's a little disappointing that we couldn't score points so that was i'm blaming the drs system mainly there and jack doing just not really doing too much p21 it's it's anonymous he's got two more races than f1 and he is gone but you see that consistency from us a p10 a p13 a p12 we've also got a p11 in there in the last four races it shows the consistency that we've got and we're showing a great end to the season and pretty much maximizing the most out of this car but that is us all done for today's episode we will see you next time out in las vegas and then for the finale in abu dhabi make sure you go ahead leave a like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace